this is my step-by-step -step build of the Rebel Kit 5046, the 1 to 720 scale USS Enterprise CVAN 65. I built the ship in its 1968 configuration and tried to provide as much detail as I could. Here's a list of the manufacturers and kit part numbers I used. Note, I'm cannibalizing the Italieri 1 to 720 USS Independence CV62 kit for various structures and parts. Also, photo etched parts such as those from Gold Metal Models and Tom's Model Works, as well as leftovers from my White Ensign Models CV6 CVA PE set, were essential to providing abundant detail, as are various sizes of sheet plastic styrene and styrene rods from manufacturers like Plastruck and Evergreen. Building an accurate representation also requires good references. Here's a list of references I used, including period correct U.S. Naval Institute archive photos. Bert Kenzie's Detail and Scale book on the Enterprise, photos from in internet image searches, and GRS Video's DVD of the Enterprise on its 1968 Tompkins Golf Cruise, which contains over an hour of footage from the ship during that 1968 cruise taken by actual crew members. I assembled the two upper hull halves, then started at the bow with corrections and adding detail. First, I removed the molded-in anchors, sanding them down to a smooth surface. I'll replace them later with photo etch anchors. For accurate mooring line openings on the front of the bow, I sanded the area clean, then marked where the bow line opening should go by good-eyeing it against my reference, the cover of the detail and scale book. I used the appropriate size tube-like parts from my spares box and styrene tube to represent the openings. Then I drilled out the marked openings on my drill press and glued the tubes in place, leaving just the right amount protruding from the bow. I wanted to represent the bow porthole windows, which by the way came from CV-9, the World War II Enterprise, as a tribute to that great ship and namesake predecessor. The bow just under the flight deck needed to be extended. I filed out the appropriate space, then used sheet styrene to fill the void and extend the bow. Then I marked the porthole locations with a pencil. Then I cut teeny slivers off an appropriate sized rod-like piece from the spares box to represent the porthole covers. I used my pin vise drill to drill out the portholes. Then I glued the porthole covers in place. The kit comes with no hangar deck and closed hangar doors. I wanted to have a hangar deck with aircraft and service vehicles viewable on that deck. Therefore I had to add the hangar deck and open two of the four doors at the stern end of the ship. To open the doors, I drilled them out on the drill press, then hand filed and sanded them to completion. To create the hangar deck, I placed the upper hole on sheet styrene and traced the outline of the deck. Then I cut, trimmed, and repeatedly test fit the sheet styrene until I finally glued it in place. Working from the detail and scale book, I corrected the crane platform area. I used sheet styrene to fashion the walls and support structures. As I fabricated these walls and structures, I repeatedly dry fit the flight deck to make sure everything fit properly and looked correct to references. The kit represents the earliest version of the Enterprise, circa 1962. Given that I'm building the 1968 version, I had to represent the structures added in the 1965 overhaul specifically the workshops and rooms off the hangar deck on the starboard side of the ship, on either side of the island support structure, and between the two forward hangar deck doors. To do so, first I cannibalized the Italieri Independence Kit by removing various structures from the sides of that ship to use in my Enterprise. As I removed them, I checked them against the Enterprise to ensure that they would work. With these parts as a foundation, I added layers of sheet styrene, filed, sanded, and repeatedly test fit to ensure proper location and accuracy to references. For the structures between the two forward starboard doors, in addition to the Indy part and sheet styrene for the room, I made a platform next to it from sheet styrene and photo etched railing. The kit provided defensive missiles are incorrect. I was able to trade a fellow modeler on the internet for the correct Mark 25 missile launchers. So I prepared the launch platforms to receive the Mark 25s, filling the holes with 2 millimeter plastic rod and superglue. Once dry, I clipped off the excess, 
then filed and sanded the platform smooth. Another highly visible part that must be corrected is the crane. The kit provided crane is an overly simple representation with just a single arm. The actual crane has a dual armed lower section with a pulley and cable at, at the top of the mast, connected to the flight deck. Again, I stole pieces from the independence kit and using portions of both cranes, I fashioned a new crane to match my references as best I could. I set it aside for final installation after the flight deck is attached. Later, I'll build a new crane mast and mast support with a pulley and cable to complete the entire crane. The crane rest is also inaccurate, so I removed it. I fashioned a more accurate crane rest using 8th inch triangular and square plastic rod in my razor saw. I cut two points off the triangular rod and glued them to the square rod, then sanded it to the appropriate thickness. Once complete, I located the proper attachment point by test fitting it with the crane. Then I glued it in place and did a final confirming test fit. Again, I'll come back to complete the entire crane later. My references show that the kit provided fantail area is incorre incorrect for 1968. The box-like structure on the port side doesn't belong. A railing surrounded platform with a ladder down to the main deck should be there instead. I started by filing the surface detail off the front of this part. Then I removed the box with my razor saw, careful to cut the front wall of that box to the correct size to fill the hole it left behind. Then I glued that front wall into the hole to create a blank back wall on which to mount the new platform. I built a new platform from photo etch catwalk and railing for the front portion and sheet styrene for the back portion. I glued photo etch closed bulkhead doorways on either side of the open center doorway to the hangar deck. The kit does have the correct starboard side platform, but it needed a railing around it, as well as a hole in the back for photo etched stairway down to the main deck. Back on the port side platform, I used point 5 millimeter plastic rod for the three support struts to complete it. I added a photo etch stairway down to the main deck just before painting the entire assembly and setting it aside for installation later. At this point it was time to prepare for eventually mounting the ship on an oak base with two lamp finials. I started by reinforcing the inside bottom of the hull where it will receive the finials with three layers of 1 inch square 0.6 millimeter styrene. To ensure precise alignment, I taped the reinforced hull to the oak base, then drilled holes through the hull bottom directly into the display base all in one motion. Then I glued the dowel rods into the base, cut them to size, and placed the finials over the rods. To ensure everything was fit properly and aligned, I dry fit the entire upper and lower sections and the flight deck on the base. Finally, I sanded, stained, and varnished the oak base and set it aside. Revel molded mooring line openings and drain pipes on the starboard side, but not the port side of the upper hull. So working from references, I marked out the proper locations for these details in pencil. For the mooring line openings, I hit the spares box again and used leftover photo etched bulkhead door openings that almost perfectly matched the kit's molded in openings and glued them in place. Next I used 0.5 millimeter styrene rod to represent the drain pipes on the port side. I measured, cut, and glued them in place over my pencil markings all the way down the port side. The parts in this kit have a lot of flash to be removed, such as around these propellers. I cut the rudders, propeller shafts, and propellers from the sprue, cleaned them up, and test fit them to the lower hull. I painted the lower hull prop shafts and rudders, testers enamel red, number 1103, and I painted the propellers, testers gold, number 1244. To complete the upper hull major improvements prior to painting, I cut off all the molded in life raft baskets, as I will replace those with photo etched baskets later. Working from references, I used flat styrene rod to add the angled support beams for the flight deck on either side of the hangar deck doors all the way around the ship. I then painted all the horizontal walking surfaces on the upper hull with Model Master Engine Gray FS36076, then masked them. 
first thing I did on the flight deck was to open all the stairways around the ship. I will be recreating all the flight deck edge stairways with photo etched stairs, catwalk, and railing later. All the kit provided jet blast shields had a terrible fit and needed to be replaced as well. I created new ones from sheet styrene, sanded, and test fit them, and then set them aside to be painted with the flight deck later. I also removed all the molded in hose reels, which will be replaced later. The underside of the flight deck is disfigured in several spots by mold ejection pin marks. I cleaned up, patched, and sanded these areas smooth, then replaced the obliterated support structs with 0.5 millimeter plastic square rod. The Enterprise kit does not come with a Frenzel lens, or what's known as the ball, so I stole the Frenzel lens and platform from the Italieri Independence kit. I removed the platform from the Indy with my razor saw, trimmed it to line up with the Enterprise deck edge, then measured, marked, and removed the Enterprise deck edge in the appropriate spot on the port side. Finally, I glued the platform onto the Enterprise edge deck edge. The lens itself will be placed on the platform later after I hand paint it and put it on in final assembly. References showed I needed two more sheet styrene walkways around the crane, one extending the flight deck aft toward the crane and the other parallel to the ship just below the flight deck. To scratch build a better mast, I found some good bits in my spares box to replace the, replace the kit mast. I crafted the upper support structure out of sheet styrene and drilled a hole in it for the mast to fit through. I cut the top of the mast piece off and flipped it sideways to create the pulley at the top of the mast. Finally, I dry fit the entire assembly with the previously corrected crane. Flight deck painting. First, I painted the flight deck edge walkways, including the new ones around the crane, in Model Master Engine Gray and then masked them. For the upper flight deck elevators and blast shields, my research found that they are what's called dark asphalt gray, which can be achieved by combining the colors in the proportions listed here. I airbrushed those parts with this mixture. I attached the fan tail assembly onto the rest of the upper hull with thick gel gap filling super glue at the corners. Once dry, I sanded it smooth all the way around. Next, I upgraded and corrected the rear starboard side of the upper hull from the missile platform back. I added more styrene rods to replicate the horizontal pipe. I put two photo etched ladders in place as per references, and I used two photo etched door hatches, one cut in half to represent the two smaller hatches and the other to represent the hatchway door toward the stern. Starting at the crane area, I worked my way around the ship, placing photo etched railing everywhere it should go. I measured, cut, bent, test fitted, then super glued each section of railing into place all the way around the ship, as you can see in these photos here. I cemented the upper and lower hull sections together with super glue. See the bent micro brushes which I had to use to get the glue into the seam between the parts from the inside. To seamlessly blend them together, I had to fill the gap at the bow with gap filling super glue and sand it smooth. Then I touched it up with rent paint after. With the crane mass now complete, I test fit, then reattach the crane rest. I'll add the cable just before painting. Here's a comparison shot of the dry fit model to the actual ship's crane area. While not perfect, the crane and surrounding area are much better than the original kit provided. I replaced the kit's molded in life raft baskets with ones I made from photo etch railing. Specifically, the short stanchion railing from my spare CV6 PE set. I attached the PE life raft baskets around the missile platforms and on the crane deck before working on the rest later. I 
I masked off and prepared the entire upper hull and its miscellaneous parts, including the bottoms of the four flight deck elevators, the new crane and its mast, the Mark 25 missile launchers and their bases, a lifeboat and the Frenzel lens. I airbrushed everything with Model Master's neutral gray FS-36-270. Before painting the edges and bottom of the flight deck with neutral gray, I carefully masked the flight deck edge walkways with Tamiya tape, then covered the larger flight deck area with parafilm masking film. Then I airbrushed the edges and bottom of the flight deck with the neutral gray. Rather than painting the black waterline bootstripe between the upper and lower sections of the hull, I find it much easier to use microscale 1 to 16 inch black stripe decal. First I airbrushed the entire hull with future floor wax to get a smooth surface. Then I worked all the way around the ship laying down the black stripe decal over the lower red section just touching the upper gray section to cover the seam between the two. When done, I overcoated the line with a Microsol decal setting solution, and once that was dry, I overcoated again with Future to permanently seal them down. With the major construction and painting done on the hull and the flight deck, I attached the flight deck to the hull with super glue and clamped it in place. Photo etched kits I used included gold medal models 1 to 700 photo etched sets containing doors, railings, ladders, radars, and anchors. Tom's model works 1 to 700 incline ladders and carrier catwalks. And again, the white engine model PE set left over from the CV6 that I built. I started with the elevators. I cut off the molded in safety nets and replaced them with photo etched safety netting. Then I attached the PE safety nets at the bow, stern, and the end of the angled deck. After painting them neutral gray by brush, I had to clear blocked holes with a straight pin. At this time, I also attached the Mark 25 missile launchers to their platforms on both sides. As you recall, I removed all the molded in stairways around the flight deck before I painted it. Now I made all 22 photo etched stairways. I worked my way around the flight deck, pushing them down through the openings at the appropriate angle and tacking them in place with a touch of super glue. Next I went around and put a photo etched hatch doorway at the bottom of each stairway. Next I made most of the railings to go around each of the stairways and doors and glued them in place. Some I had to customize to fit the situation, like below the angled deck. Next, I cut photo etch catwalks and with the ship upside down, glued those over the previously placed railings from the bottom. Finally, I went around the ship and hand brushed all the stairways, railings, and catwalks in the neutral gray all the way around the flight deck. This time, I also went around and put more railing in various spots around the flight deck where it was required. Starfighter decal set 700-9 is specifically made for this Enterprise model. With a layer of future floor wax on the flight deck, I started with the electrical outlet warning boxes. They nestled right down with Microsoft setting solution and the carrier film totally disappeared. Note, these decals are not individually pre-cut and they're very thin, so you have to carefully cut them out of the carrier film. I immediately noticed that the angle landing area outline decals don't match up with the lines that are etched into the deck on the kit. Even after cutting them into multiple sections, I just couldn't get them to line up to the etching. In the end, I only used the Starfighter white and yellow center line. For the rest, I used the Microscale white stripe decal 9111 and 91131 and solid white decal for the rectangles. 
It was easier to lay the long white lines over the deck etching and then I the individual white blocks measured for proper distance between each with my calipers. With the landing area done, I moved on to the rest of the Starfighter decals, which worked perfectly. After 24 hours, I sprayed the deck with Future to seal everything down. And after another 12 hours, I sprayed the deck with, dusters, with Tester's Dull Coat in the can to give it the proper sheen. As I was checking references for the flight deck decals, I also discovered a new t detail not included in the kit that had to be scratch built. This is the Basic Point Defense Missile System Director, or BPDMS, on the starboard side of the ship. It was used to launch and direct the Mark 25 missiles. To fabricate it, I again stole a structure from the CV-62 Indy kit to serve as the base for the BPDMS platform just below the Enterprise's island, notching the rear lower corner to fit the edge of the flight deck. I then scoured my spares box for leftover photo etch sets to fabricate the BP DMS. From the CV-6 kit, I again stole anti-aircraft guns and two airplane wheels and struts. I bent back the struts and glued the trimmed wheels to the sides of the anti-aircraft gun section. I glued that to a small piece of spare sprue for the stand, and I drilled a hole in the center of the platform to receive that stand. I then sliced a slot 270 degrees around the edge of the platform with my razor saw, and I cut three sections of safety net to size and slid those into the slots with a, with a touch of super with a touch of super glue. Then I added two support posts and dry fit the entire structure. Next I made photo etched anchors. Then I used some ring shaped pieces from my spares box to create simulated anchor holes in the hull which I sanded down to size. Then I trimmed and bent the anchors to look as if they were drawn up into the holes. After painting I glued the anchors into the holes with a drop of super glue and once dry I tacked the anchor in the hole assembly in place with a touch of super glue on each side of the bow. At this time I also glued the rudders, drive shafts, and propellers in place under the stern, which I had painted previously. Another detail not included in the kit to be scratch built is the Landing Signal Officer or LSO platform on the starboard side just aft of the elevator. Using Kinsey's Detail and Scale book as my reference, I flash fashioned the platform from scrap photo etch sprue, leftover PE safety netting, and spare plastic sprue. I then attached and painted it neutral gray. I think it came out okay. Yet another prominent detail missing from the kit is all the antenna around the edge of the ship. To recreate these, I used rigid .005 mm wire, windbreak support frames, and sections of two-bar close stanchion railing from the leftover CV-6 PE set, and the hand railings from the Tom's Model Works photo-etched inclined ladders. I cut one-inch sections of the wire and hammered one end flat. Then I bent those ends 30 degrees. I used the triangular PE windbreak supports to represent the lower support frames for the antenna. I then glued these parts under the deck edge as per references around the ship. Next I cut and bent the three rail section railing to represent the upper outer support frames for the antenna. Lastly, I used the topmost portion of the hand railings from the PE inclined ladders to represent the support structure between the upper support frame and the antenna. Finally, I went around and hand brushed the antenna neutral gray. At this time, I also placed all the PE lifeboat baskets and hand painted them as well. I worked some engine gray deck color into a ball of sticky tack. Then I worked teeny balls of that sticky tack into the baskets to simulate folded canvas rubber lifeboats. I simulated the rack of four light gray rectangles on the starboard side of the ship with PE catwalk and sections of square styrene rod. I went back to the Indy kit and cut apart the lifeboat parts 
to represent the hose reels on my Big E. I painted them black, then dry brushed them silver, and then glued them into place. Placed the new crane and completed it with fishing line to represent the cable between the mast pulley and the crane pulley and painted it. And I glued the previously hand painted Frenzel lens platform into place on the starboard side. Building and detailing the island. I glued together the four sides of the island and held them in place to dry with a rubber band. The antenna on the beehive dome are actually T-shaped, so I shaped the bottom row with my number 11 blade. To enhance the dome, I cut spare PE metal into two sets of tiny rectangles, then glued them directly over the next two rows of scribe detail in the dome. I grew, glued the top of the island on, and then filled gaps at the corners along the rows of windows and corrected various surfaces with sheet styrene and thick super glue, then sanded them smooth. The molded detail on the lower island walls is incorrect. I sanded them smooth all the way around and scribed new panel lines and placed PE doors as per references. I created the angled door structure protruding from the port side of the lower island with 1.5 millimeter square rod cut diagonally. References showed the flag bridge deck needed to be extended and raised, which I did with sheet styrene, then wrapped it in PE railing. Next I made PE stairways, then cut and bent all the PE railing to fit, then glued them and the PE doorways in place all the way around the island top. Before adding more details, I airbrushed the panel arrays on all four sides with Model Master light gray FS36495 and masked them. To strengthen the mast to withstand the tension of the rigging later, I extended and reinforced it with spare sprue. I then drilled a hole in the top of the dome. I placed a dab of super glue on the bottom and inserted the extended mast through the hole into the dome. Next I addressed the gold metal model's SPN6 PE antenna. References showed it has a crow's, crow's nest-like structure as well as a ladder. I cut out the small support structure from the kit part and substituted a spares box piece better suited to support the ladder. I used the end of my paintbrush to shape the PE antenna and joined it to the remnant of the kit part. I built a crow's nest from scrap PE metal and PE railing and I glued the mast in place and set the antenna aside until later for painting. Next I added all the vertical support posts around the three sides of the island. I cut these out of PE railing sections to recreate the posts, then went around the island and glued them in place as per references. My references showed two small platforms aft, each with a dish antenna. Again, I used the windbreak support frames from my leftover CV6 PE set for the support beams. I fabricated the platforms from spare PE metal and I used PE airplane wheels for the dish antenna. To complete the mast assembly on the top of the dome, I added the kit provided main mast supports. Then I fabricated the small aft antenna structure from spare PE metal and I put a PE ladder on the forward side of the mast. I fabricated the two umbrella-like antenna from spare sprue and PE bits, then stretched Walther's goo from bottom to top of the four horizontal arms. As several were missing or incorrectly located on the kit island, I removed the double cone antenna structures. I then fabricated new ones using spare sprue shaped into ovals and triangles cut from spare PE metal yielding a 2D representation of these 3D cone-like structures. I then glued them in place around the island according to references. Next, I made the gold metal model's photo etched SBS-12 antenna and glued it atop the kit's mast for it. 
I did the same with the SPS 10 PE antenna as well. I glued all the antenna and the dome in place. References showed a structure extending from the starboard aft corner of the island to which rigging is to be attached, so I used a spare PE structure to represent it. After further masking the panel arrays, I airbrushed the entire island, specifically all the vertical surfaces, in Model Master Neutral Gray FS36270. After an airbrushed coat of future floor wax, next came the 65 decal from the Starfighter decal set. Then all the windows on the two upper decks and other areas of the island for which I used the windows from two sets of gold metal models naval ship decals and yet more cut from micro scale black stripe decal which I carefully placed all around the island as per references. I carefully hand brushed all the decks or horizontal surfaces with Model Master Engine Gray FS36076. Next, as per references, I cut out the appropriate efficiency award decals from the gold medal models carrier decal set. I placed CEWEE -E -E on the starboard side and the reverse on the port side. Finally, I used Walter's goo again to create the rigging by stretching it from the upper and lower mast arms to the appropriate attachment points at opposite corners of the island and the sides. And with that, the island and thus the ship was finished.